Welcome back to another edition, another season of Post Media's Ottawa Senators panel. I'm Ken Warren with Don Brennan and Bruce Garriock. Brand new year, brand new uh, vision of the Senators right here. Guys, we've got a lot to talk about here. We start our new year. Uh, a lot of changes. Head coach DJ Smith, Guy Boucher and Mark Crawford gone. Um, you run through the litany of changes, and it's quite something when you go back from the change. In is Ron Hainsey, Nikita Zaitsev, Connor Brown, Tyler Ennis, Artem Anisimov, I think I got that right. Gone, of course, Cody Ceci, uh, longtime senator. Uh, ben Harper gone. Anyone else? Zach, Zach, Zach Smith. Zach Smith. Yeah, in, the, in the Anisimov uh, trade. Guys, there's a lot to chew on here. Um, where do we start, Bruce? Do we start with a message from the coach here? Well, I think you look at the number of changes that have gone on. Obviously, they couldn't sit still in the, in, with what happened last year, and they wanted to move on. I'm surprised at some of the moves they made. I, I was surprised that they made such a big deal with the Toronto Maple Leafs in, in getting Nikita Zaitsev and, and Connor Brown in that deal for Cody Ceci. Uh, you look at the, the changes that they have made and the young players that are supposed to come in here. Obviously, uh, General Manager Pierre Dorian couldn't sit still. It started at the top with the hiring of DJ Smith, and, and DJ Smith is obviously going to bring a new message and a new voice, and we'll see where this goes starting day one of training camp. Don, um, a new coach, new message probably gives himself some time, right? Because it's all about building with the youth. Uh, what do you expect him to try to instill here? Uh, you know, what, what, what's he going to try to change immediately? Well, uh, it's obvious that the defensive game of the Ottawa Senators over the last, um, I don't know, seems like five years, but it's probably been three, has been horrendous. And, you know, he identified that as a problem. Very shrewd of DJ right there. Um, I think that from what I've heard, along with all the, all the fawning over DJ Smith, is that he's, uh, he's going to have them working hard. And uh, he takes a lot of... Um, you know, ambition and enthusiasm to his game, but for as far as I'm, or to his job, but as far as I'm concerned, I mean, DJ Smith, he may turn out to be a great coach, but I don't know how many times we're going to go down this road. It's giving a new guy a chance, the Craig Hartsburgs, the Paul McLeans, the Corey Clusons. He could be another one of those. You keep throwing enough stuff at the wall, though, and sometimes well, it's Okay, new coaches go through a honeymoon period, and there's no question this is not about today. This is about two, three even four years down the road building with the, with the kids. And, and I, you know, the one move I, I thought was necessary here was Cody Ceci. He wasn't, he wasn't going anywhere. He was spinning his wheels. We're going to see what's going to happen with Zaitsev, whether he can replace him properly. I don't know. But let's, that's probably down the road. What, where maybe are the training camp, what are we looking for in training camp battles? Who's going to try to make this team? Who probably should make this team that's a newcomer? Well, based on what you saw at the rookie tournament, I, I would assume that Brown, Batherson, uh, Formington and in Eric Brandstrom are going to be in the mix somehow. Where they're going to fit into all this, you can have Logan Brown as a fourth line center. And if you look at this team right now, I think they have four centers. So, um, you know, that there's obviously I think an opening on the wing for for Batherson or Formington because you know Mark Stone isn't there anymore. Yeah. Uh, on the blue line, uh, I don't know if they want to put Brandstrom in uh, to start the season. I think that the thinking there maybe he starts the year in Belleville and then is brought up during the season. But but to me, those are the obvious, obvious guys who are going to battle for a position. They're set in net with Nielsen and Anderson, right. so that, that's not going to change. Um, but but those four guys, in some way, shape, or form, are going to push for spots. Well, well the, way, the way I look at it in front is uh, Batherson has a job to lose here. If he, if he does training camp the way, if he continues to progress, I think he's on this team. The, the intriguing one for me up front is Logan Brown, like you say. Like, and, and if he's a center, somebody, does Colin White move to the wing? Does somebody else move to the wing? Do, do you? Because he's a power play guy, too. If he's on this team, I think he's got to see power play time. Well, I think there's a big need for Logan Brown to have a good camp and to make this team. I mean, you look at what's going to be a big problem for the Ottawa Senators. Uh, the defensive game you have to assume is going to be better because there's so much focus on it. But where are the goals going to come from? They don't have any scoring. They've lost the Mark Stone, the Ryan Dezingo, the uh, Matt Duchesne, Eric Carlson, I guess, long ago. But right now, they, I think they project to be like the lowest scoring team in the NHL. Um, and hopefully that they can maybe improve on their 31st ranking in well, defense Well, that, that's well. A, intriguing you bring that up because the long-term goal is, is you know, you're not expecting to make the playoffs there. You want your young guys to get better. You want, you want you know, with Brown, Batherson, uh, yeah. Branstrom, you want these guys to get some NHL playing time and develop. But at the same time, you, you're looking at a 2020 draft, and, and, and that's going to be a really strong draft. And the lower you, you, you 
you know, you, you, you finish the season, the better you are in terms of the draft lottery, and, and you could potentially get a superstar out of that draft. So tank it. Well, without <laughs> saying you're tanking it, I mean, you want these guys to develop. you got some veterans who are supposed to, to keep, the, uh, keep the rookies online, and maybe, you know, how does that work? If these veterans have a good year, are they getting traded, you know, at the, before the trade deadline? Probably, right, because there's some value in them. So I find that an intriguing part of what's going to happen this year. Well, I think it's also going to be intriguing when you talk about veterans, what happens in that, because every year this team has come to training camp, and Craig Anderson has been anointed with the number one position this year. Uh, they're talking about an A and B situation where him and Nielsen uh, kind of share the duties, and that's probably the first time I don't know. In, yeah. in, in the eight years Anderson has been here, that we've even heard that kind of talk, and I don't know if Anderson has any kind of season. It seems early to talk about the trade deadline, but is he an attractive option at the trade deadline? It, it, that's possible. Well, well, okay. We talk about goalies, or we talk about these young guys that may be developing. Well, either Hogberg, I assume, and Gustafsson. At some point, if one of those guys gets traded, you want to see if these guys can actually stick and, and play in the NHL. And, and I thought Hogberg was okay when he, you know, brief turn. He was outstanding with Belleville. Yeah. Maybe, you know, you have a good, really strong first half, and maybe that, that, that forces the issue a little bit, and you want to get Anderson and or Nielsen possibly traded, and then you open the door for him to play. Um, so we, we've gone through this. What, what, do you, what do you think fans should expect in terms of, in terms of results or expectations? I mean, what... what you know, we talked about it. Are, are they going to be a, a team that's competitive? Are they going to be a team that, that can't score? Are they going to be a team that's going to, you know, lose games 2-1, 3-2? Well, right off the bat, I think that fans should expect uh, the Senators to be watching the Leafs cuts because they've got to be bringing in some more Toronto Maple Leafs, I would think. <laughs> they don't have enough. No, um, I, I think that fans, you know, I think that most people want to see a team that's really working hard, really trying hard and entertaining, and they're going to be unpredictable. They're going to be making the defensive mistakes, and again, they're not going to have the scoring, but I think fans want a little excitement. I don't think anybody should expect anything higher than 31st in the NHL. I think what you have, what people should expect is, I think what they want to see is, is people always want to see, the one thing we heard under Guy Boucher was, people want to see young players play. And they want to see, you know, they they want they couldn't understand why some guys were scratched last year. So they're going to want to see the young players play. What are the, the expectations? The expectations are pretty low for this team right now. Um, there is that there should be absolutely no pressure on this team. M my expectation is that you know if they can improve, they've got to improve somewhat defensively if they're going to give themselves any chance. And they they had better they have got to buy into to. DJ Smith's message, we're not exactly sure what that's going to be right now. He's talked a lot about defensive hockey, and he's talked about his system, but we haven't seen it. Well, that, that's action. exactly right. And that you can try to put some of that in place in training camp, but if you're bringing in 55, 60 guys, it's going to take a while to, to really get down to, you know, how you want your team to play because that's, that's a lot of players. So as the cuts come, I think we're going to see a little bit more and more of uh, of – of sort of exactly how he wants to employ this. But I, it's going to be intrigued. I'm intrigued by Brandstrom. And you talk about the defensive play. I, I, I think it makes sense for him to be in, in Belleville to start the year. If you're trying to get, you know, you don't want to exploit the guy. If he's going to come in and, and you harm a young guy and you get him feeling bad about how he's playing, give him a chance to play a lot more minutes in Belleville. That's one guy. Um, but in terms of uh, in terms of how this team's going to fa face, I just uh, – one last thought here, Don, before we wrap up on just, just what, you know, your sort of thoughts about this going in? Well, I, I guess that there's going to be some uh, responsibility for the veterans, the Craig Andersons, and I guess they say Ron Haynes, he's a leader. He hasn't talked to the media yet. He hasn't stepped forward and shown a leadership in that, in that way at all. I, I'm wondering why that is. But uh, guys like him, and, and who do you have up front? Is Jean-Gabriel Pajot? Um, you know, I think that Brady Kachuk, there's going to be a lot of attention on him, and I think that he's going to emerge as a leader this year. I think Thomas Shabbat is going to emerge more as a leader. To me, those two guys are, are going to be worth the price of admission, but they're certainly not enough to, uh, like, as I, as I think, bring the six well, the, the, centers any higher than 31st in the NHL. Well, I think it'll be intriguing to see who, who really turns out as Thomas Shabbat's partner in all of this. You know, he's pl he played with Dylan DeMello for the most part last year. It certainly sounds like from speaking to DJ Smith on the weekend that that is going to change, that he's going to see opportunities with Ron Haynes, the end, and Nikita Zaitsev, and, and how much uh, does Nikita Zaitsev help improve this club's defensive play 
both those guys are used to playing with high-end defensemen, so I think that's going to be something to watch. I, you mentioned, uh, both you guys, you mentioned about Kachuk and Colin White. I think these are two really young guys. They had, they were surrounded a bit by Mark Stone last year. How can these guys be leaders in their own right from the, uh, from the get-go? They had great starts last year, so I want to see if they can do it on their own. Uh, that's about it. We're, you know, we'll be back every week, so more topics to talk about next week. But thanks for tuning in for a new season of Ottawa Senators Post Media Panel. Thank you.